How's it going? I'm Josh KI6NAZ. Welcome to the Ham Radio Crash Course. Today I am in a lakeside cabin or Lakeview cabin uh, in Big Bear, California. I'm up here for about a week and I decided to drag a whole bag's worth of antennas that I have needed to get into tune and, and just spend some more time with. So today we're going to use and build the DX Commander Expedition. Stay tuned. Looking at the very well written instructions that Callum has put together, looks like the first thing I'm going to need to do is cut the antenna wires to the length that they need to be for the different bands that I'm going to be operating on. I will be cutting my DX Commander for 40, 20, and 17 meters. Being that I'm cutting this for 40, I'll likely pull out a bit of the 15 meter band as well. So it'll give me pretty good coverage. The Expedition has three primary antenna holes or antenna mount points, and there is an additional mount point that you could add a fourth radial to. I'll uh, go ahead and build the three now, and then I'll consider in the future adding another uh, element to it to get another band. I left my label maker at home, and so I'll be cutting off strips of Luco tape, and I'll use that on the elements to get an idea of what band I'm on. All right, so goal one, here's our antenna wire. Here's a hundred foot tape. We need to stretch this out. Ooh, this is nice wire. This is the first time I've, I'm uh, actually touching this wire. It's been in a package for a little while. Callum, good stuff, man. Nope, don't do it. Don't do it. No, nope, I'm already getting knotted up here. Come on now, buddy. How did I get to this point? What happened here? Why? Oh, how is this done? How is this looped? Oh my God. <sighs> Let me go ahead and get this sorted out. I'll be back with you shortly. All right, so the good news is this wire, the coating is really, really nice. So I'm just gonna redo that whole thing again. So I got the measurements on my phone. Took a little picture after I did the conversions. So we're gonna be at about 36 feet, nine inches. 32, 35, 36, and nine inches. Whew, we just made our first cut. That's the scariest part about an antenna build, that first cut. Really make sure you're measuring properly before you cut. And as I mentioned, just so I don't forget, little piece of tape. It'd be best if you used a label maker for this that says 40 on it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and rinse and repeat, cutting the rest of the elements. Remember, we're only doing three for the expedition. So we're gonna do 20 next, and then 17. Okay, 20 meters, 15 feet, 10 inches. Oop, we passed it. <laughs> passed it by a lot. Okay, with the wire elements cut, three bands, remember 40, 20, 17, and we get 15 off of the 40 meter element. We're now gonna need 20 11 foot and about six inches of radial wire so we're going to cut up 20 11 foot six inch wires and those will be bundled in five bundles of four elements let's get to cutting what do you say i just use this clip for all the others would that be so wrong i don't know <laughs> i think maybe in this case i'll be all right it is a radial wire right Comment in the uh, in the chat if you're freaking out I'm doing this. So let's see, <laughs> how'd I do? It's pretty close. <laughs> There's three. And if, uh, if you're thinking to yourself, how is he keeping track that they're not just getting longer over time? I'm using the same one. So that's eight. And we got a bit of spare wire, so I'll hang on to that just in case. All right, let's, uh, let's snip up the rest. And I'll go ahead and remind everybody, a 100 foot tape, really good thing to have. In fact, even going a little bit beyond that if you wanna go with some longer stuff, but uh, this'll generally get you through 40, no problem, 80 meters, generally okay, as long as you're doing like, you know, quarter wave, verticals, dipole, stuff like that. So 100, 100 foot tape. If you get metric on here too, probably a good idea. So we're now at the phase where we're going to test fit or 
test set up the mast before assembling the elements. Now there's a part of the instructions that I didn't fully understand what Callum was going with it. Basically, he was saying to test fit the guy lines, but I don't know how that's possible without attaching the guy plate first. So I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pull up the mast, I'm going to put the guy plate on, and I'm gonna test fit where I'm gonna place the antenna uh, with, the, um, with the tent stakes that I brought with me. I hope that's right. I'll show you what I'm about to do. Oh yeah, this is a big pole, man. Jeez, wow. <laughs> That's a whippy thing. All right, let's, let's lay it down now. So the guy plate sits down about right here. These are the holes for the guy plates, the bigger holes. I believe I need to stake out my area, slide this into place, and then do like a tot line hitch, you know, with some decent space. We'll try, we'll try that. I think that's all right. What's that? Watch out for this pole, okay? Don't step on it. Turn the back of my Xterra here into a makeshift uh, workbench. We're gonna go ahead and bundle the uh, radials now. So, looking at these fork connectors, you need maybe whoop, quarter inch or so stripped off. If you wanted to go back over this, hit it with a bit of solder, probably be okay. You might lose some of the shielding here, but I'd rather have solder uh, personally. I'll worry about that a later when I get off the mountain as I kind of make this more of a permanent uh, portable. Permanent portable, permanent, very good. You get the idea. Let's do that with the rest of them. Make a note, you also need to attach the little fork connectors here to the radiating elements. The plastic on the connector is gonna be a different color most likely than the one you use for the radials. The reason is the diameter, the gauge that this accepts is much larger than what this accepts. So keep that in mind, you want the smaller gauge for the single radiating element so you get a nice tight connection. All right, so we're we've done with the pre-work. Consider this the mise de place of building uh, the DX Commander Expedition. The next step is we need to start erecting the mast get it up, figure out the guying system, and then start assembling the plates. And then that will lead us to feeding the elements up the actual mast, and in the case of the 40 element, up to the top, the last spreader, and then back down. And that should be it. I feel like I'm at the halfway point at this particular juncture. I'm gonna build up the plate since I'm sitting here and uh, see if I can get some of the other early stuff done, like the shock cord mounts with the carabiners. Obviously, these are all my wires and radials spread out everywhere. I think I'm in a good place. So you can see the guy plate, difference between the guy plate and the spreader. Guy plate has the guy mount holes. Spreader is just for the elements. And then this is the top spreader element. So you can see and just assume, right, long pole in the middle here separating these guys. So important, set those aside for now. Heat shrink tubing, the carabiners, which have matching doodads here that you snap in. That would be kind of permanent. I'm not gonna do that now. What I'm really looking for is to get to these guys. All right, here we go. <clears throat> this is the bottom plate. PL259 connectors here. Spreads out the ground points to the five ground holes that we already have uh, plate, you know, the, the ground radials. And then we have the upper element. There we go, something like that and that's the radiating plate, and then our radiating elements will connect in, into these different locations. And one of these spots is for the PL259 connector. Pretty easy. Let's throw some bolts on here, see what it looks like. Are these threaded? Oh, they're threaded. Beauty. Threaded connector goes there, washer on top, and then your wing nut, and that's how you're gonna mount the ground radials, and the radiating element. I'll go ahead and place the radiating line now here too, or the uh, connection for the antenna. Let's go ahead and do that now. Oof, okay, maybe not this guy, maybe this one. There we go. 
threads a little bit better. Something else to think about, we've got this uh, tubing, and we've got these Jubilee clips, as they're referred to by Callum. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, use these this tubing on these Jubilee clips. So what's not in the instruction is how long this tubing should be. But from looking at this and the diameter of what we're gonna be connecting to, it's, it's probably better to err on the shorter side because you don't wanna waste the tubing. Um, so I'm guessing about that much is gonna be fine. So I'll snip it right here, feed it around, and then that extra slide piece will go, go back in. You know, I'm gonna back it off a little bit. And I don't have the right tool for the job. So the old trusty Thank you, Tuck2. <laughs> Whoops. There we go. <laughs> yeah, let's let's err on the side of less on this one. Let's see how we do. And remember when installing these, don't don't uh, over tighten. Don't over tighten them on the, the the mast. You will break it. So the instructions say the guying needs to be at 120 degree intervals, four feet from where you want to center your mast. And we're going to measure out four feet. And then we're going to test the guying. So we'll make the first one there. That means 120 there and there. And the last one, I'll call it about right here. You could go a little bit deeper with these. <laughs> I appreciate that. So as I understand it, the guy plate is right there, right here. I'm going to attach a, a Jubilee clip and then I'll do this so we're getting as accurate as possible. Callum's instruction specifically called out here and here. At least I believe that's correct. Okay, well that's very joyous, a Jubilee clip. I might be doing this wrong um, at this particular point. I don't know that you need this, but we're going to use it now. So I'm going to tie off some ends, leave a little bit long, tie a prusik. Sorry, top line hitch. Okay, guy holes are the big holes. Take it here, come back about that far, make a cut. Who knows how to tie a top line hitch? Probably close the blade. Seems like a good idea. Two guy lines cannot stand. Two guy lines can stand, one cannot, so we'll lay him down for a second. <clears throat> All right, last one. It's pretty close. Close enough for what we're doing. This could go out a little bit. We can adjust it though. Yeah, it's fine. I may need the rest of this for one of the elements, so hang on to that as well. This one's a little long, a little long, a little too long. Hang on to the extra bit. Okay, so you got the guy plate pretty much sorted out. Uh, the next thing you gotta do is start attaching the radial plates and the, uh, the elements piece to it, and then attaching Jubilee clips in the bottom, and then one up towards the top. Let's start doing that right now. So an ingenious aspect of this build is that the bottom cap is actually where the radiating plate mounts. So top cap on, twist off the bottom cap, keep it clean, <laughs> make sure it stays clean. Here's your radial plate, goes on top. Now the instructions say instead of going on top and immediately start tightening it, um, twist counterclockwise until it kind of seats like that 
and then tighten it down. Not too tight. Okay, so we have radial elements plate on the bottom. We're gonna slide your driven element, your radial element, your radiating element uh, plate on top of that. Slide that around a little bit. Like that maybe, okay. Then a hose clamp goes on top to hold it snugly in place. Now if you want to, you can feed up the... So I went ahead and I attached the PL259 driven element or driven component onto the radiating part. And so now it's just really a matter of extending this and feeding the wires through. Instructions say you should put a hose clamp on the second one because a lot of weight gets stored here. All right, I've taken the liberty of attaching the guy plate on top. I'm going to spread out the rest of them. I'll get the rest of the standoffs in place. Ow! Pull and twist. Okay, pull, pull, and then twist, or do it at the same time. Pull, twist. Pull, twist. Pull, twist. Pull, twist. When you get to the bottom, you need to do a little bit more oomph, I've noticed. Good. All right. Where is it? Oh, there it is. There's the first stop. First one. And done. Something like that. Okay. It's time to string the elements. I'm gonna start out easy with 17. At least I hope it's easy. So I'm gonna go to the base plate here and I'm gonna screw this in. All right, get the end of the element. Now it's time to feed it up. Okay, so about here, we need some shock cord to get us up the full length. Let's see how much shock cord we have. We have a pretty decent amount of shock cord. I'm gonna string the rest of them and see how much I need. The top of our mast here needs to use these tubes to feed the 40 up over the top and then back down. And that's what I'm gonna do right now and I'll show you what it looks like when I get it all tightened up. I can only imagine how big the nebula is gonna be in person. Crazy big. So you feed the tube through the bottom two, what I'm calling the bottom two. Take up the slack and I'm assuming you gotta take this down a bit. And then up here at the top, at the six meter. Oh yeah, that's gonna be a real tight fit. Okay, I get it. I get it now. Also, the instruction recommends helically winding the element. So I'm gonna do that right now. Okay, with that whole business out of the way, I'm very confident we have enough uh, shock cord. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and do a little knot here. That goes down on the bottom here. Take your carabiner. And there you go. Nice permanent clip. And I'll do the same thing on the other end. And then I'll cut it in the middle. Let's do the 20 meter. That seems to be the easiest one, I think. They're the closest there. All right, nothing permanent here because we may have to adjust this wire. This is the way it's gonna clip in. And it's shock cord, right? So we need to give a bit of stretch to it. So I'm gonna clip it in. Okay. Pull it pretty tight. I'm guessing maybe about right there. Well, no, because I gotta fold this over with the tape. So let's do that, something like that, and we'll tape it. We're gonna come back over this with uh, 
heat shrink tubing. This is a temporary solution. And not a, not a great one. <laughs> Electrical tape would be better, but hey, I'll use what I got here. Okay, so a bit of tension. We gotta do the same thing back. So accounting for some, some tension like that. Probably wanna make it a little bit long in case we have to adjust it, in case we have to shorten the lead. So I'm gonna actually make it pretty long It could be tighter, but we'll we'll do uh, we'll sort that out after the tuning. Similar thing for 17. We're gonna clip plenty of extra shock cord in case we need it. I hope we don't. Remember, I cut the uh, I cut the radiating elements a little long. So again, we're gonna take a loop here. Again, we'll kind of cut it long. right in the oil spot. That's a light tension. It could do a little bit better, but we'll sort it out after. I think we gotta put this thing up now. I think we're ready. Oop, no, calm down now. Now if I had a little bit more space, I would have uh, set this up a bit differently, but I don't. So this is how I set it up. So holding tension to this guy. There we go. Okay, let's adjust it a bit. Wow. <laughs> you know, that might just work. That might just work. Guide out, up the mast. All the radiating elements and 40 looks like it got loose. I'm not happy about that. <laughs> it looks like it's way loose, what happened? Ah, we can adjust that easy enough. Let's do an initial tune, or uh, let's check it on the analyzer and see what happens. Oh, I love it. This is awesome. This is cool. A little bit of a sway, but I'm assuming that's my uh, installation. <laughs> the results are in, oh, I'm in a shadow, aren't I? Let's do this the other way different shot. Well, the results are in fantastic. Uh, everything's a bit long. The only band that's short is the 20, but there's about an inch or so of wire that I can feed back up that I used for the folded over sticky temporary thing. I feel like I can get that way back down into the lower end of the single sideband portion of the band, but we're talking about everything is below like 1.2 to one, except for 15. Yeah, <laughs> fantastic. I'm, I'm gonna get on 20 right now and uh, see what it sounds like on the air. Let's check it out. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. Uh, yeah, Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu, come on in. Ah, uh, yeah, I just wanted to check into the net. I heard you. I actually just finished setting up an antenna, so uh, the fact you're hearing me is already worth my whole day. Thank you for uh, letting me check in. Roger, Roger. Thank you so much for checking in there, buddy. Uh, where, where is the net control located uh, at, at this point? Okay, I, actually, I'm in uh, Kaisu, Oregon. Oh, that's fantastic. I'm talking to you on 5 watts right now, 5 watts, uh, so this is great. I uh, really appreciate letting me check in. Roger, you, uh, you have a great day. Seven three, K I six N A Z. Wow, Oregon, Oregon, five watts. Okay, so what do I have to say about the DX Commander? Obviously, this is very much a build video because. This is a, a kit in that you get all the parts to make the antenna, but you're gonna have to walk through making the antenna. Callum has done a lot of the work of co-locating high quality material for you to build this antenna, and you do get a very good antenna once you complete it, but you do have to build it. And hopefully I walk through the steps 
in the way that logically made sense to me after reading the instructions and how to do it. It's very straightforward, but it is a process that you must follow. So it's a lot of the how to build. And then here at the end is the review. This is a great antenna. If you have the money to spend on this, which is not very expensive, I highly recommend it. There is only one single caveat I will give to this entire kit. The Expedition, which I reviewed today, is a Expedition antenna, meaning it's a temporary antenna. Can it stay assembled for weeks, months on end? Probably. Would I suggest you do this as a permanent antenna? No. I would recommend you get the classic, the DX Commander Classic, if you're going to assemble this permanently. And there's, this is the only reason why. The way that this antenna works, as you saw, it has the elements attached to shock cord, and the shock cord is pulling down on the antenna, on the mast. And this is a telescoping mast. It wants to get pulled by gravity back into the center tube. And I did have the antenna collapse in on itself during the live stream. You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. The noise that I just heard was the uh, DX Commander pole sliding into itself. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I'm going to have to fix that live. <laughs> what do we get to? <laughs> It's, it's stuff like this, honestly, why I do these. Because I actually like when, when stuff goes completely upside down. It's <laughs> just so funny. When I was doing a live test of the antenna. The antenna's fine. The mast is fine. But keep in mind, the Expedition is a temporary setup antenna. The Classic comes with more Jubilee clips. And that means you'll be able to attach them right at the mount point where the two telescoping ends go into the other one. You attach the Jubilee clip, you'll have much less situations where the mast will collapse on itself. Not a complaint about the Expedition, it is a portable antenna. I'm just merely wanting you to acknowledge and understand if you are going to set this up at home for a long time, go with the Classic. You will thank me, I promise you. Callum sent me this antenna to check out. It is a fantastic antenna. It is worth the time and effort you put into it. You will get it increasingly better antenna the more time you spend tweaking those elements just a little bit but i found just after my first couple of cuts on that element i was done it, it set up very easily following callum's instructions i did convert to metric to standard and i had no problems i assembled it and it's very wide banded very low swr across the whole band and every time i used it on 20 and 40 it worked flawlessly. I was able to do easy single sideband contacts and easy digital mode contacts with it. If you have any interest at all in this antenna, the link is in the description for Callum's website where you can get it. Cannot recommend this antenna enough. This is a fantastic antenna. This is a number one buy it. If you, if you think you can build this kit and you've got space to put up a vertical with the radials, just do it. Do it. All right, that's it. I love when I can make a video like this where I'm just like, yes, 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 yay, verily, this is a fantastic antenna. Great job, Callum, over the DX Commander. Not just a great manufacturer of antenna kits, also a really good YouTuber. You should check him out in his videos. He does really great work. Okay, I'm Josh, KI6NAZ. You tell me how you think I did on this video. Post in the comments below, and I'll talk to you later.